Okay, welcome to another prepared video. I'm going to uh, continue my mountain hopping. So in the last one I went from whatever airport that was over here to KGNB and crashed into the runway. I'm not going to refly that leg of the flight. I'm just going to do the next leg, which is going to be uh, KGNB, which is where I'm at right now, over to KEGE. -E. Now let me bring the GPS down here so that I have that have that on view here. I uh, thought I would show a little bit here in case you don't happen to know how to work the uh, GPS. I'll show it's pretty easy. Um, so by default, this is basically what it's going to look like. To put in a airport, uh, you just press this D over here, which is the GPS Direct 2 button. And then that brings up this stuff here. And what you have to do is you use this dial down here. There's an outer ring and an inner ring. The outer ring moves from uh, spot to spot, and the inner ring adjusts the actual spot. So I'll show you what I mean. So since this whole thing's flashing, the first thing I've got to do is kind of click out here on the outer ring. And it's not real clear where the border's at. You've got, you know, that's the outer ring, and then like in here is the inner ring. So you kind of just have to know from experience where to click. Uh, it's not the best setup in the world, but anyway, so I'll click here on the outer ring first. Actually, I take that back. I'm wrong, so let me go back. And you see I'm trying to fit, find where that's at. It's like right here. So then what I actually want to do is click on the inner ring, which would be like right here. And now I've got these uh, digits up, and I believe I can just type in. Yeah, sometimes it lets me do it. Sometimes it does that double type thing, so... Unfortunately, when it does the double type, I actually have to go through it this way. So I'm going to have to keep clicking here until I get to K, the letter K. So IJK, then now I'm going to click on the outer ring to move it forward one. So like out here. Now I'm going to click on the inner ring to get the letter E. And I'm just dialing in the uh, code for this particular airport, which is KE. Now on the outer ring to move forward, then on the inner ring, the letter G. I went past it, so I'll go back one, and then forward by clicking on the outer ring, and then the letter E by clicking on the inner ring. There we have it. So once you have that, just click Enter, and then that highlights the whole thing, so hit Enter again. And then down here it says, do you want to activate it? So hit Enter again. And now we've got our course plotted for our current location over to the airport that we want to fly to. And it even tells you the heading, but it doesn't tell you the heading on this instance. I don't see, actually, yeah, it does here, 231. So that's the heading we want. So we can actually dial that in now. Uh, but let me do it this way. Let me move this MFD or whatever you want to call it back up to my second monitor, get it out of the way. Let me bring the other one down here, and I'll actually adjust the heading here. So we want a heading of 231. So let me just click on this ring until it comes around to 231. And there we go, we've got our heading. And uh, if you were going to fly based on navigation you would also want to set the course but in this one we're just going to use the GPS so you can't actually adjust the course but if you flip the uh, if you click down here the CDI you can adjust over to nav 1 wouldn't this would be like if you were using VOR or something so you would also in addition to setting the heading you would come over here to the CRS which is the course and you'd set your course uh, you know be the same be 231 like that so now you've got the course set and you can see the green line is in the center and then you would adjust your heading throughout the flight so not I'm, just, I'm not going to do that though I'm going to use the GPS so we're going to go CDI until we get the GPS here now we're going to set our altitude where our elevation is uh, actually before I set the altitude let me set the barometer and I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut which is the letter B and it's set so um, so that's fine. Our current our current altitude is about 8,200 feet. Um, so we, we obviously we want to set an altitude higher than that. 
So I'm just pressing this button over here and you can see the altitude increasing there. And we're going to set it for like 11,000. I don't know how high the mountains are between here and KEGE. -E, so we'll start with 11,000 and then we'll make adjustments as necessary. All right, so that's our flight plan. That's pretty well set up, pretty basic, pretty simple. We're not going to do any uh, VR, VOR. We're just going to fly straight there. So I'm going to move that back up on the uh, second monitor to get out of the way. And I'll have this, um, I'll be doing most of the flying, well, I'll be doing all the flying and you'll see it down here in this window, but as I get up in the air, I'll make sure that I pan the camera down so you can see the instrument display, but for now, I want to have everything centered for takeoff. So let me set the flaps down one notch. And you can see that down here. Um, let me go down a little more. Actually, I guess you can't really see the flaps from this vantage point. It's this button here, but you can't see it. And let me think if there's anything else I need to do before takeoff. I think I've pretty well got everything set up. So let's release the parking brake. And I'm not going to dial in. I'm not going to call into the ATC and announce, you know, clearance of the runway and all that. We're just going to fly. So, all right, here we go. Uh, full throttle. I actually hooked up my, my uh, SciTech throttle so I can't actually use the throttle on the main joystick anymore so okay full throttle and I changed the sensitivity settings a bit on my joysticks because that just the elevator and aileron just felt really overly sensitive and the null zone especially on the uh, ailerons seemed like it was not set in the right spot so I did a bit of adjusting there and We'll see how this works out. We're at 55 knots, almost 60 knots. I don't know exactly what takeoff speed is, but I think it's like 65. Okay, there we are, 65 knots. Let's pitch back. Climbing. And raise the landing gear. And now I'll go ahead and bring the view down a bit so you can see the instrument panel. And we're going to fly straight out on the runway heading until we get to at least, uh, you know, 9,000 feet. Because I can see by looking over here that the mountains are, you know, pretty steep. So we want to get some altitude before we uh, start turning. Actually, I can probably climb more than that. Well, maybe not. I'm only at 85 knots and I'm not really gaining any airspeed. So we're just going to continue climbing here. Got about uh, 700 feet per, per minute. Actually, I think I'll increase the throttle a bit. That's, that's one of the problems I'm having, okay. I had the throttle tuned down a bit too much. Um, rather the propeller. That's why I wasn't getting any uh, increase in the airspeed. If you look over here at this instrument, you can see the RPM. And before it was only, I didn't quite catch what the number was, but it was set way too low. The prop was set way too low. Okay, we're at 9,000. I think we can probably start our turn. So let's bank over, start turning toward our... Uh... Okay, now in order to get on course, we're going to have to overturn. So we're going to turn past our heading a bit until we get on track with the GPS. Because if you, you notice that the GPS needle is a bit to the left, and that means we just need to fly a bit farther uh, you know, to the left in order for it to catch up. And you can also clearly see that over here. You know, since we took off and flew out this way, you know, we need to catch up to the, uh, to the GPS over here. And I forgot to raise the flaps, so let me do that now. And we've got about 49 nautical miles to go. You can see the uh, distance here, because this time I've got KEGE -E dialed in on the GPS. So we have a 
distance indicator here. And it won't take too long to get over there because this, uh, this aircraft flies pretty fast when we get up to cruise speed. Though it looks like I might have to climb higher than 11,000 because those mountains in front of me look look like they're higher than what I'm currently at, so I think we'll probably plan on 12,000. Increase the prop a little bit more. If you watch over, if you watch over here, you'll see that I'm increasing the prop. Still a bit off track, so I'm just banking a bit to the left. Okay, we're coming up on 11,000. It's our uh, target altitude, but again, I don't think that's going to be high enough. So I'm going to go ahead and continue climbing beyond 11. Yeah, those mountains look to me like they're at least at least 11,000, if not 11,500 or even 12. So we're not going to get over top of them if we don't climb a bit more, I don't think. It can be a little tricky to tell the distance because, you know, I'm looking basically eye level with the, uh, with the cowling. And it seems to me that... Yeah, it seems to me that if uh, if we don't climb some more, we're not going to make it over top of that. So everything's trimmed out pretty well. I am applying a bit of back pressure on the stick. Uh, I don't have a trim wheel um, set up at the moment. I have one, but I don't have it set up. So I guess I can actually just put in a little bit of back elevator trim. That way I don't have to keep applying pressure on the back stick. Okay, I think we've got a good enough angle to catch up with the GPS now here. And so I'm just going to fly at this. Put in a little bit of down elevator trim. Climbing a bit too steep. We're losing speed. And we're at 12,700. I think we're high enough now, but I think I'm going to go ahead and go for 13 even because it just... Nah, nah, I think we're high enough. We'll just... Right here is fine. So now I'm just going to work on um, keeping, maintaining altitude right here around 12.8. Take out a little bit of uh, throttle. Pitch down a little bit just to... Yeah, we're fine. We've got enough altitude. Put in a little bit of down elevator trim. And we're almost caught up with the GPS. You can see here and here our needle's almost straight. Losing a little bit of altitude, but again, my target is about 12.8. So I'd like to try to just fly right around that altitude. Uh, we're only 36 miles, nautical miles out. A little bit more down elevator, we're still climbing. And we're on track now, so let's turn to our heading. About right there. Now we're flying straight to the airport. A little bit more down elevator, we're still climbing. I should say down elevator trim is what I'm adjusting. Now we're losing a little bit of altitude, and that's fine because my goal, my target, is to fly right around 12.8. And it's not a matter necessarily of, you know, it doesn't matter 12.8, 12.9, 13, but just being able to pick a target and stay at that target. And I chose 12.8, so that's what I'm going for. I don't know the runway layout at this airport, so I don't know what I, how I need to be oriented when I arrive there. So we'll just kind of 
figure that out when we get there. I didn't look at an airport chart or anything ahead of time. Okay, I'm almost at 12.8. And we're still losing altitude, but the uh, it's trending upwards, so we're right about where we want to be. I'm going to take out a little bit of... Decrease the throttle a little bit. Because the elevator trim is adjusting too much at once. So if I just babysit the throttle a little bit, I'll be able to maintain altitude a little better. We're at 12.86. So within 100 feet of the target altitude, that's good. And I'm going to turn to 233 because it looks to me like I'm a bit to the left of the uh, flight path. Actually, I'm losing altitude. Let me increase the throttle just a little bit. You can hear the engine winding up a bit. Get back to a uh, positive climb. Get back closer to 12. 12.8. Take out a little bit of throttle now that we're climbing. And I'm just going to bank a bit to the left because I can clearly see that my GPS is showing that I'm a bit too far right. And you don't really need to be that particular about it, but there's really not a whole lot to do when you're flying, so it's just, just a matter of keeping everything lined up. Okay, I'm going to put in just a little bit of throttle now because I can see that my vertical speed starting to drop a bit. I just want to make sure that we don't drop too much. You can hear, if you listen carefully, you can hear the subtle, subtle change in pitch of the engine as I increase the throttle a little bit. And we're 22 nautical miles out, so we will be coming up to the airport very shortly. My guess is that it's probably right on the other side of this hill. Might even be down in this valley, I'm not sure. Take out a bit of engine throttle. We don't really want to climb at this point. We've got all the altitude that we need. And I guess one thing I haven't done is I haven't really looked around much. <laughs> now something else I can say about this simulator is I was looking on the website on the forum and they are going to be, they are working on a version 12.1 or 2.1 rather and that will fix uh, several of the issues that I've been having. There's this whole issue that a lot of people were reporting where if you, um, basically if you go full screen with the sim, then when you start it back up, you just get black screens. The only way to really solve that is to make sure that the simulator starts up with, when it's not in full screen. And that's kind of, irritating because I like to start up you know with the default scenario of some kind and have all my instruments set where I want them so for now I just have to start up with the default uh, with the default scenario not in full screen mode and then once it starts then I pick my own scenario so it just adds you know quite a bit of time because you know loading scenarios takes a while and simulators because there's so much uh, terrain and all this other stuff that has to be loaded Anyway, I need to bank to the right now. I can see that my GPS is indicating that I'm off. And since I'm only 14 miles out, I'm going to start letting the uh, plane descend. So I'm taking out some throttle. And I'm not flying with any weather, so it really doesn't matter which direction I land. I don't know the elevation of the airport that I'm going to though. And I can I can get that information I believe on the GPS, but at this point I don't have time to look for it, so bank a bit to the left. You can see I'm getting off track. That must be the airport there, yeah, okay. 
Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll plan on landing on that runway, so we'll kind of bank way out here to the left so we can get in front of it. So you can see clearly that my uh, vertical speed is you know dropping quite a bit and that's because I'm pulling way back on the throttle because we need to drop uh, several thousand feet so the runways over here see if we can actually land this time without nose diving into the runway bank a bit to the left because we need to buy some time maybe do some s turns here and I'm gonna put the flaps down a couple notches start slowing things down a bit as I do that I'm gonna push forward on the uh, the yoke so that we don't climb. I'm not actually sure why it climbs so much when you put in the uh, flaps. Seems to me like it's an abnormal amount. Okay, there we've got things settled down, so let's bank toward the runway now. Let me center the view a little better so I can see. Just tilt that down a bit so you can see the instruments. take out some more engine throttle so we can lose some more of this altitude yeah we've got quite a bit more altitude to lose so we're gonna have to do a big S turn here we're still very close to the runway the runway must be at like 7,000 feet or something I think what I'll actually do is a complete 360 here. Gotta be a little careful though, because obviously these mountains over here are quite a bit higher than the runway. I'm just going to fly this way a little bit, get away from the runway a little more. Lead off a little bit more altitude, and we'll turn back. Putting in a little more throttle, I can see the... Uh, Airspeed's dropping quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to just do a 360 turn around, hopefully face the runway, be in front of it, and be low enough now to be able to land. I'm probably breaking all kinds of aviation rules by landing this way, but... I am definitely not a real pilot, and I definitely have not spent enough time practicing real flying to know what all the rules are as far as, you know, going out away from the runway by X amount and then doing your, doing whatever you need to do to get down, and I don't, I don't know all those rules. And I don't know, really a lot of that kind of thing I don't find real interesting either. It's not why I fly these flight simulators. I find more just the VFR, you know, do your own thing, fly out of a small grassy patch, perhaps one that you even own your own, you know, on your own farm or something and then okay, we're definitely low enough now. 
almost in front of the runway. I'm still a little high up. I can see I've got all white lights there. That's indicating clearly that I'm too high, so we'll continue descending at a rapid rate. Bring the throttle way back. Just be careful not to stall. Actually, I'm going to throw the gear down before I forget. I did a uh, fun flight last night. Great flight. Got all the way to the airport. Everything was looking good, and then I landed without having the gear down. Okay, we're almost on the glide slope. We got one red light now. And there's two that were so we're right where we need to be. Now we're too low. Bring up the throttle a little bit. Okay, we're here. Man, I can't believe I did that again. Oh, that is frustrating. I don't know what it is about this airplane, but right when you get, maybe maybe I'm bringing the uh, airspeed down too low, but just it just oscillates so much there at the end. Well, that's two crashes in a row, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and end this part of the video. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna continue mountain hopping, but. I'm just going to pick up at this airport when I do it. I'm not going to bother, um, you know, going all the way back to the first one and reflying these parts. So the next leg of the flight is, I don't have my papers here in front of me, so I'll have to look it up and then put a note in the description. Anyway, if you like the video, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the uh, flight sim stuff, uh, if you're interested in this and or not. Um, again, I would think that people that are into Orbiter would also be interested in flight sims, but maybe not. Um, anyway, if you're not interested, obviously you can just choose not to watch the uh, flight sim videos. And in any case, I will see you in the next video.